So you're absolutely right. They do all kinds of incessant repetition of what's going on and, and making and giant mountains out of molehills. And again, having spent, uh, you know, 30 years debunking the press, I, I can tell you the backstory on why I do that. Uh, first time I realized the press wasn't telling the truth was in the early 1980s when the film Terms of Endearment was partially shot on location here in Lincoln, Nebraska, where I live now. And at the time, I was a theater student. And so you had these big name actors you know, coming into town. I mean, how often does Shirley MacLaine show up in Lincoln, Nebraska, right? Um, and Jeff Daniels, he was not known at the time. Oh, that was fun. Jeff Daniels was fun. Um, he wasn't known at the time. Nobody really knew who he was. So he would just hang out at his uh, hotel room when nobody was, when he wasn't doing anything. A friend of mine and I, another actor friend of mine, walked up there one time just to see, and there he was in his hotel room. And he was bored, so he started talking to us. You know, a couple of theater students. He was great to, he was great to hang around with. But the, when I realized that they weren't telling the truth the first time, um, they had Deborah Winger, who was a passable movie star at that time. And she flew into town. This is, you know, this, at the time, Lincoln was a city of about only 100,000. Not, not that big a city. It's doubled since then, but at that time, it was only 100,000. And so she flew into the municipal airport, got in a limo, drove to the hotel, got out of the limo, went straight into the ballroom where they were having then a, um, a press conference. And my friend and I uh, had forged press credentials so we could go to the press conference. And so they're asking her questions, blah, 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 blah. And they get to this one question, what are you going to do when you're not shooting? And now what normally happens is you have very pat answers. You know, performers have figured this out a long time ago. They always say stuff like, well, this is a really beautiful city. Um, I can tell from the air. Haven't seen that much of it, but I can tell from the air and driving through. It's a really beautiful city. It's very different from Los Angeles. Um, the people here are all very nice and friendly, and I really can't wait to get out and explore. Who wants to go with me? You know, for the cameras, right? She didn't do that. She said, I don't know. Is there anything to do? Well, in point of fact, there are things to do in Lincoln. Even when it was that size, you had a sizable, uh, a very large presence. We have uh, four colleges and universities, including University of Nebraska at Lincoln, the Cornhuskers. And there are lots of bars, there's lots of culture, and there are things to do and were at that time. But she didn't know that. Um, but the press took that as an opening and they crucified her the next day. They didn't, they didn't make it up. They didn't get together and say, let's crucify her. They all just said, oh, she's left us an opening. So there was a, uh, a, a, a reception afterwards, and so I got to meet her, and uh, we shook her hand and said, you know, I'm a fledgling actor myself, Miss Winger, nice to meet you. I really enjoyed some of the work you've done, blah, 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 and that was about it. I could tell that she was, you know, she'd had something to drink on the plane. She, she, she was loose. She was loose, but she wasn't drunk. She was just loose. But the press, the next day, said that she was a drunken whore who had hit on every man present and had insulted Lincoln and, by extension, the entire state of Nebraska. Statewide, every newspaper, every TV outlet, which was all you had at that time, all of them had that exact same story, and it was complete nonsense. And in point of fact, she actually liked Lincoln. She dated Governor Bob Carey for a number of years. They were an item for a number of years. You know, she, she came and stayed with him at the governor's mansion all the time. She liked the place. But they had this, you know, big thing that they did where they just lied about her. And I had them do the same thing to me uh, one time when I was working at a dinner, uh, not a dinner theater, a uh, summer stock theater where I was warned in advance. They would, they would do, they had a woman on the local paper who would do human interest fluff pieces on, you know, cast members, crew members, and every week just do somebody different. I was warned in advance that she would take advantage of any opening in order to make you look bad. Don't know why, but that's what she always did. And I left her an opening. I, I didn't do it on purpose, but I left her an opening, and she did a hit piece on me. 
And ever since then, it's been, the press has been exactly the same. And I've gotten to the point where I can track it down and figure out where they're lying, where they're making crap up just out of whole cloth, where they're throwing in opinions, where they're throwing in emotionally loaded language to give the readers some kind of emotional feeling. And that goes w with TV news and Internet news as well. So, Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.